It's so good to see you. I always love being able to see you once a week. Thank you. Same. Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. You haven't heard that one? I haven't heard it in so long. I know, right? <laughs> the, that's such a mid-2000s thing to say. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Huh. I feel like people said it again then. Because I hadn't heard it in the mid-2000s. Really? I heard it like 18, 19. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was like a resurgence thing. Like, but minor. Like, like it, yeet. Like yeet. It was, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Because yeet technically is a mid-2000s thing. Dude, it's so funny. This I bitch empty! Yeet! Yeet! <laughs> Do kids know the origin of yeet? They probably don't. Was it from that video? Yeah. Okay, I it think should, it should be. I don't I don't know where if there was an or if there was an origin to the origin, I don't know. But all I know I don't oh is that an eccentric schoolboy with a empty le uh, empty liter of soda, I think. I think it was a soda bought like an empty liter, two mm -hmm. liter, two liter machine bro. This bitch empty! Yay! And yeeted it. And it persisted decades after. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably been like a decade. It's definitely been a decade. Probably. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was a vine. I want to say. It totally was. Right? Anyways, what what episode are we on? I, I got distracted. One, one, 109. I know because I have notes for 108 that I haven't torn off yet. Oh. Uh, up, I'm at number 108. Note down M200 settings with 85 1.2. I think 160, 160, 500. Thank you. These yellow ones are my notes. Like if for, for certain things, that's what I've de designated to. And I have a pink one, and I have a purple one, and I have an orange one. Those don't have any designation. This is the only one that has a designation. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, welcome to 109, everybody. Hopefully everybody's having a good... 109 Wednesday or no when do I have these again Wednesdays right Wednesday yeah oh, I was right I don't know why I'm freaking out <laughs> <laughs> do you have another song play oh I do not oh man oh, bring please. it give us another one DJ let's let's have a let's have a relaxing start um yes. but yes welcome to 109 Uneducation Station Arthur is here Zach is also here as always and thank you for joining us we had a lot of fun last episode talking about Boji the Rock. It's a lot of fun. I could Dude. talk about Boat to the Rock for 50 episodes. And there, after watching it back and listening back to it, I, there's still so much more I want to add on to it. Yeah, okay. it's it, it's definitely... Whether we do that this episode, I don't know. Maybe that'll come back in conversation. But, you know, I just want to say there's so much to talk about, you know? It's so it's so fascinating because Boat to the Rock is one of those shows that... Of all time. <laughs> Dude, that killed me. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> random tangent. I, I I did a quick little rewatch mm -hmm. and of like the first little bit of the episode, just because yeah. like I just wanted to see out of my own curiosity. And that part came up, and I just was folded <laughs> over. It's silly. It's one of the most animes of all time. I don't know why I find that funny. I, it's not even that funny. But it's it's just so stupid because you read it and you know exactly what like you see it in the comments section. This is one of the most videos of all time, and you read it and it makes no sense. But you know what they meant, and that's why it's so funny because it doesn't take a sec. It does. It takes a nanosecond for your brain to understand. This is just a stupid, weird word formation of whatever it's supposed to be. But it makes sense even though sy syntaxly, it doesn't. But it's hilarious. So yeah, I, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, uh, Bochi, so Bochi, again. Uh, Bochi is one of those shows that there's so much that we could go into about it, and yeah. there's so many different avenues that we could go down. And I think looking at it from like the musician's perspective was pretty good mm -hmm. when it came to um, when it came to like just looking at the the premise of the show and how like we're musicians and mm -hmm. we've played live and had that whole experience of like being terrified yeah we didn't really talk about that we didn't talk about being performers ourselves that was a one th like it's, it was an obvious one but we want to talk about so many other things but you know what we'll talk about it again in conversation just watch bochi the rock you'll probably figure it out you'll probably know exactly what we're talking about 
but yeah i don't know you know i was making the thumbnail for that and i was just going through bochi and then screenshotting because i never got to screenshot it very much for sure yeah. because you know a certain streaming service gave took that away from us zach why did you take that away why from did us? you take that away from us uh, it's just sharing content with other amongst our friends there's nothing wrong with that that's how you expose content to other people anyways sorry but i would but i went ahead and went uh, just scrub through try to find fun fun screenshots for the thumbnail and man oh it made me so happy to do so there was a one oh there was a one with nijika when she was you can oh gosh how do i explain it it was during the second performance when she realized that but she was guitar hero and she like lit up oh my gosh mm -hmm. it's in the thumbnail i saw that and i, I was like oh, that's so precious <laughs> that makes me so happy because she it, there's one frame where she's just so defeated and she feels so bad because they did that horrible performance and she felt so sad and then she glowed up i'm like oh my gosh save these save these poor poor cute girls zach i don't want them <laughs> to be sad i don't want them to be sad i just want them to be in a band and i just <laughs> want them to play music and <laughs> <laughs> cute girls doing cute things cute girls doing cute things you know in k on there's it's basically just that there's never really a dramatic moment really mm -hmm. it's all just kind of fluff and fun and you know i mean every now and then there's like a mini dramatic moment just for honestly more comedic purposes yeah but there's just but because of that it does a flip side where when there is a dr dramatic episode, you're like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> you're like, I no, don't want I don't them want, to go through that. I don't want them to do that. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't want to see them sad. <laughs> but that's that's what, made K -On, that was, that's what makes K-On really fun. So I don't know. But, hey, we talked about anime for like two straight episodes. How is life, Zach? How have you been? I've been good. Mm -hmm. Um, I've definitely been trying to kind of get my ducks in a row and and prioritize the things that like make me happy mm -hmm. you know and i <clears throat> and for those of you who don't know my life is utter chaos all the time um today is like the first day that i actually get to chill out and hang out with my dogs and just not really do a whole lot there you go um and so i'm i'm really trying to make that mental adjustment in my head where all of the things that I'm doing outside of work are things that I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to not be like, oh man, I have so much shit going on and like it's just complete and utter madness and I'm just driving myself insane. But yeah, all of the things that I'm doing are things that I enjoy doing. Like coming here and shooting the podcast with you or going out and shooting photos for an event like I did last weekend mm -hmm. or, you know, going rock climbing or whatever. Um, it's all stuff I want to do. And so I think I kind of lumped all of the things that I had going on in with work in, in my brain where it's like, uh, mm -hmm. I have to go do all this shit. Yeah. But as a, you're figuring it out and that's good. Yeah. It's good to be on a schedule. Even if it's not, like I mentioned before, I don't, I'm not a schedule person. Yeah. I, I don't know if you are. But, I need I need a schedule. Right, you need a schedule. I mean, I have my little, little no, noty righty boy, mm. and I don't know if you saw. I've incorporated the cl the calendar back, the whiteboard calendar. Thank God, it's like it's loaded, but it's okay. It looks convoluted. It, nobody can see it, but it looks like <laughs> it's loaded, and it is technically. But it's more because it's congested. Yeah, and have to write small, so it looks like there's more than there is. But it's really if you if you go up and read it, there's like two bullet points per day. So and and this is just my project stuff. So an ad what videos I need to be done. Because back when I was a COD editor uh, in, in a humble team called Red, I wore, used this whiteboard. This is when I got it. And that's when I would mark down deadlines. And I would do things when I should, if I had a project, when I should finish certain parts of the project. When, when, what days should I finish the syncing of each clip? What days should I finish recording cinematics? What day I should finish syncing cinematics? And mm -hmm. this would incorporate to my school, school day too. Like realistically, okay, if I have to do X amount of schoolwork plus track and field, how many days should I give myself to, you know, do these, record these cinematics or whatever? Yeah. Maybe this time, and I'll, I'll, today I'll do half of them and then the next day I'll do a quarter of them and then the next day I'll do the last quarter of them, right? Mm -hmm. So finding ways like that to kind of slice it up, uh, that makes more sense to me. Like this whole 50%, 75% because I'm visual, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'll just do half the pie today and then do ha half the pie the next day. It's mm -hmm. not too bad. Rather than, okay, these two days is when you have to finish it. 
well, okay, then uh, that that sound. You have two days to finish it versus okay. <clears throat> Let me rephrase this. You have a project. You're gonna make a a song mm-hmm. for a album. Yeah, an album. Oh uh, no, an EP. So six songs. Mm-hmm. And you have a week. Hopefully not, but let's say you have a week. Okay, so I have a week to do six songs. That sounds pretty scary. Yeah. So let's change it. Uh, let's say in three days, I do... No, in two days, I'll do like a song. Just a song in two days. Yeah. Everything's written. Everything's you know ready. It's just I have to get this recording, get this take or whatever, and master it in two days. We master at the end, but no, okay. My 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 example is falling apart, but let me continue anyways. So in two days, I'll do like ten percent of it. In the next three days, I'll do like fifty percent of it. And then the next two days, I'll do like another thirty percent or so. Yeah. So that leaves what eighty percent, eighty percent, so twenty more percent, twenty twenty percent for the last couple of days. Yeah. So you section it off in this kind of. Just oh, oh, a healthier way that you can picture it in your head that doesn't sound daunting as, okay, I have a week or I have seven days. No, 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 don't say that. Say I'll do 50% here, 20% here, 10% here, another te- 20% here or something like that, right? Yeah. That's what's worked for me. So I can kind of visualize what I need to do for the day or for the week in a, kind of like a pie chart. That's a great way to think about it, actually. Yes, because pie charts are probably the only graphs that make sense to most people. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's just 100%. Can't get easier than that. It It's... If, it go, if there's a pie chart that goes past 100%, I don't know what that is. I didn't take AP statistics. I took calculus. Honors English, And honors English, too. Yep. <laughs> I took a single college English class. And AP music theory. Hey, don't don't and don't and, shit on yourself. And, and music theory. Music theory. No, was that AP? no, I was talking I about that was AP. Oh, oh, sorry. Good. I, I was talking about like in college. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I did take music theory and all that kind of stuff in high school, mm-hmm. and that dude, that was so fun. I'm, I'm glad. Oh, I miss music theory. Like actually sitting down and and digesting all of the. Yeah. The music theory That's knowledge. Good. Here's the problem. I don't. I'm too practical, so I. I don't think I could sit down and l- learn music theory. I would need to enact it, which I'm sure you guys do. Uh, right. Maybe I, I don't know. You guys. Okay, today we're gonna sit on the piano and look at music theory and shit. So <laughs> <laughs> music theory, music theory and, and shit. <laughs> and shit. So the cool thing about music theory is that most of the things that you learn outside of the history of different theoretical stuff is you can apply it you can apply it to pretty much anything and it just kind of works right. like you know we were talking about writing out chord voicings and you know putting the different um the different notes in the bass mm-hmm. to i have an eyelash in my eye i got it though you got it you got, got it i got it We're good. okay good okay just making sure I was, like, <laughs> I, I was freaking out i was like oh god why is my eye hurt <laughs> i look oh, over sorry. there and you're just like digging at your own eyeball and i'm like he's like are you <laughs> <Got> <laughs> remove <it>. eyeball <laughs> anyway sorry go ahead proceed <laughs> oh dude you're fine uh like when when we're learning about like chord voicings and all that kind of stuff and how you can change how the chord is arranged so that you can easily in intertwine different chords together Mm -hmm. um it's it's basically like writing out the different hand shapes for chords on piano Mm -hmm. so you would like do different inversions and have like the fifth in the bass or the third in the bass or the seventh in the bass if you're feeling real spicy (laughs) and then you know just kind of doing it that way and learning the different um different modes so like you know harmonic major harmonic minor um you know like Lydian, Dorian, right, right, all all of that stuff. Bunch of uh, Italian words or whatever they are. Are they Italian? I think they're Italian. I mean, I don't know. Mixolydian. I don't know. Ritardando. It's a 
dynamic. Such a funny word. I'm sorry. It it's just like, uh, I, growing up, just like, why is it funny, Zach? Why don't you elaborate? Because I don't know, Zach. Why is it funny? Well, it, <laughs> <laughs> you're really hanging me out to dry here. Uh, it just means slow. It's a medical term. Go on, go on, say it. Well, I I'm just I just I'll say it if you want. I'm scared. All right, then. We'll move on. Just because you're scared. But just know <laughs> that's also a medical term. Oh, no, I know. I know. It it just... And a verb. A verb? No. An adverb? It sounds... Verb. verb. I don't know. Words are hard. It means slow. That's all. Or in verb... In, ver, in this scenario, to slow down. So that would be a verb. Yeah. Yeah, it it's just such a but like reading things that are written in Italian, like especially the music terminology, some of it is just super wacky. Oh yeah, it's it's okay, first of all, I just want to say I don't actually know if it's Italian. I'm pretty sure maybe maybe, maybe some of the dynamics in the uh accelerate acceler, accelerates whatever they want to call them are probably Italian. I'm pretty sure they are. Are they all Italian? I don't know. They're just long noodly words that kind of, they don't really make sense, but you see it and you see some letters in it and you're like, oh, that's what that is. Like uh, sports, it's Sforzando, where it goes like, Bah-bah. oh, I didn't know that one. Yeah. Uh, it It's abbreviated SFZ. So it's like a big attack and then die down. And it usually has like a little crescendo on the end of it. So it's like, uh-huh. Bah-bah. Oh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's fun. Dude, it... See, it, because there's these things, but you have to have a word for it. So make it Italian. I don't know. <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking Italian, Italian, dude. I saw this one... I saw this, God forbid, YouTube short, right? Of uh, Oh, God, here I we know, go. I know, But it, it's of, a, of our homie, uh, Grass to Tyson Neal, right? Our homie. And he was talking about the differences, or, or just how, how stupid big using big words are. Neil Ingrass Tyson. Yeah, that guy. He was talking about just how silly, uh, comparing like biologists to astrophysicists. I mean, he's biased, but mm-hmm. for a good reason this time around. He's like, what is the, uh, what what is the number one, uh, I forget what you would even call it, thing as a biologist, element? No, not element. That sounds, I sound like an idiot trying to say it, but you know, what's the number one thing that you work with in, in, in biology? Diet. What is it? DNA, die, die, something nucleic acid. I have no idea. Do you what... I don't remember what the D is. Dio, die, die something nucleic acid, right? See, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. And then, okay, so there's also a red spot in Saturn. What do astrophysicists call them? Um, red spot. Big rock. Big rock. <laughs> <laughs> we got big rock. There's a. Die, die, whatever nucleic acid, and the biggest thing in 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 astrophysicism or the 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 creation of of time or whatever, Big Bang. You know, it's like he talks. He, you know, he just talks about how sometimes these big words become a barrier of learning mm-hmm. of, or barrier of entrance. So that's just kind of one of those things. But I don't know. I guess we've kind of. Found a way to shorten things like you know crescendo. We just have little little, little triangle buddy or whatever, yeah. <laughs> or just cr. I think or C- cr yes. I've seen like cres. Yeah, and usually that, it, I think it'd be cres. But it it's never. But there's a symbol for itarando, right? Or is it just r e i t? Or I think it's just r i t. Oh okay. I think maybe I think of something else. But you know things yeah. like that. Yeah, and because who the fuck is gonna? Who you know what I mean? Like calm down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nobody's and, gonna get all prim and proper because you didn't write the whole Italian word when Italian. You don't know a lick of Italian on your music sheet. Yeah. Oh, he's not a composer. <laughs> <laughs> no oh. one's gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to people who are putting in slide positions for they're like they're writing on the same sheet of music that that all of this elegant stuff is written in, just like sloppy slide positions yeah, for you trombone. Worry, you just, don't worry about all these slide positions for the trombone. You should be sliding the life uh, the, the, the life support into the socket, you know? Like, you should be worrying about other things in your life. 
how the hell did we get there? Anyway, because any- they're old, Zach. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I've my brain is not braining today. Where is my pizza pie? You know those guys. Who touched my spaghetti? Who touched my spaghetti? Who touched my ritadando? You know that guy. See, now I'm going to look this up. Well, what are you going to look up? I'm going to look up um, what language oh, okay, okay. all of that stuff is written in. I would assume it's Italian. Why would it not? You know what I mean? But, but then again, I'm, that's just an assumption. Maybe I'm wrong for assuming, you know? I'm a bad person. All right, let's see. Um, Zach's looking up. What is... Here oh, we go. I don't know how to phrase this. What I- what language is used in music sheet or music notation? I don't know. Music. Music. <laughs> notation. Ah. Try notation. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's see. Italian. It, it's a Santorini pizza pie. It's a me, Mario. It's a me, Mario. <laughs> I'm Italian, but for some reason, I'm a Mexican. It doesn't make any sense. You know, that yeah. guy. That guy. Did you go and watch the Super Mario movie, by the way? Have you seen it? I have not. I have not not either. I've I've heard heard it's good. Yeah, I've heard pretty good things. I was never against it. I mean, a lot of people, they say, like, it's pretty good for a kid's movie. I I don't know whether, and then then, I I don't know whether, how to gauge that. Yeah. Because what the fuck does that mean? I think SpongeBob is, SpongeBob the movie is a great movie, whether it's a kid's movie or not. I'm not going to call it a kid's movie. It's a movie for damn grown adults, Zach, the SpongeBob movie. Wait, which one? The 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 obvious one, Zach. Why I, in I, the world would I talk about the whatever the fuck when they turn into superheroes? The three acid hours, trip. When they turn into super yeah superheroes three hours into the movie, when you're when all you wanted was to see that in hour one. In the first twenty minutes. No, too too bad. They're too busy doing musical numbers. <laughs> SpongeBob on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> But they did that in the original SpongeBob movie, and that was fine. That was great. Now that we're men, I changed my underwear. underwear. Now that we're men, that was great, Zach. That was so funny, dude. It's a movie for men, Zach. That's not a kids movie. You know what a kids movie is? Handy Mandy, the 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 movie. Does it have a movie? I don't know. House Rhinos. They take a long time. <laughs> Handy Mandy does a house reno hour long special. <laughs> Bro. Can you imagine? That would be so funny. I would I would watch it on <laughs> It's like I'm just it's like a four year old just watching basically HGTV but <laughs> in cartoon version. <laughs> I just feel bad for anyone who would have to sit down and animate that. Like I well, I mean uh, Okay, I am not an animator, Zach. I do not I don't work well in 3D, specifically 3D modeling and these type of things. I, to be fair, I don't work on it a lot, but it's not really my thing. Right. I've tried it. It's not my thing, right? I feel like Handy Mandy's not that hard to animate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have you, I mean, yeah. if you you look at some Handy Mandy clips, I mean, it's been, a, it's been God knows how long. My brain probably hadn't even fully developed last time I watched Handy Mandy, but if, you, if no one knows what Handy Mandy is, it's basically the... Um, Bob the Builder's lesser known brother. Um, and. Okay. Bas- I-, I mentioned I can. I know a Bezier curve when I see one. I know a keyframe. I've seen keyframes. I see keyframes every day. Mm-hmm. I know what a keyframe looks like. I know when you easy ease that keyframe. I know when you mess with the little legs with the keyframe. I know where the keyframe is. Cubic, chord, expo. Exponent, exponential. I know these words, Zach. So when I, if I, when, when I'm telling you that, even though I don't know a lot about, you know, animation, that's probably not that hard to animate. <laughs> you're getting Bro, like high school yeah. animators, you know. And to be fair, hey, if you're a high school animator and they give you Handy Manny, that's a fun project. Yeah, you oh, know, yeah. that's a good one to put in the portfolio. Hey, you're like I made. Guess what I guess what I worked on. I worked on Handy Mandy. I made two hours of him renovating a house. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my god, dude! How would they even? And then for some reason they said, "Move that bus." It was the craziest shit. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, 
there are, there are so many shows out there that are just like that try really hard to dramatize like renovating a house. Like uh like uh yeah. what show was it that was the move that move that bus thing? I don't know. I just remember it. Move that bus. And then they would move the bus and, and they then would, they're and like then everybody <laughs> and then it would be a new house and then everybody would be like <gasps> and then people would be crying <laughs> and then hugging and shit. <laughs> crying and hugging and snotting everywhere. Now, okay, I now for me, right? I, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it uh, but okay, I'm a, I'm a pretty emotional guy, I like to think, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm easily you know, my tear ducts can go pretty easily depending on the certain certain circumstances. But, you know, mm-hmm. in a lot of circumstances, they'll they'll start to run. The waterworks will hit. Um, if I paid a lot of money to get my house renoed and it got renoed, I wouldn't cry of tears of joy. I'd be like, Yep, that's what I paid for. Sick. Cool. <laughs> now, I don't know if the story I'm pretty sure in that show the story is that they do it for free. I don't think they do it for free. I hope so. I hope so, but I'm pretty sure they may, maybe add like a, a incredibly incredibly tax tax deducted price. I mean, yeah, you know or I mean. or it's like they cut a deal where it's like, hey, if if we're able to film this whole process, then we'll give you like a little, right, right, you know, little under the table, just like, hey, or it's here. just a full thing because I mean, uh, you know, I guess it could be free and they just don't pay them. Like to That's be true. to be actors, right? Because they're they're yeah. also acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that makes sense. But that's what I would hope. The show biz it leaves a lot to be desired, Zach. So I don't a know. lot, a lot to be desired. Which is a great segue to Ocean of Cold, which is an anime that we're gonna watch at some point. Oh, uh, I keep forgetting. No, but- that's okay. I'm I'm super behind as well. I've only watched the first episode. Granted, I read the mango, but you know I'm behind as well. But it's a great show about. Uh, how fucked the entertainment industry is. Ooh. And I'm super pumped because if anybody knows anything about the Japanese entertainment industry, um, which it's fair if you don't, it's not really something you really under- you really know, but or, or I, anything I expect anybody to know. And it's something I don't even know either because it's not something I you know consume a lot. Mm-hmm. But it is something that I've seen foreigners criticize, <clears throat> excuse me, foreigners criticize because it is quite literally the definition of lollipops and gumdrops and la la land where every every single minute thing is scripted yeah and everything is happy it's mm umai sugoi Whoa! it's like jesus you know what i mean yeah it's very 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 to the pen and paper right yeah it's very scripted to base like essentially to their reactions almost. No, even to their reactions. When they should react, when they should be surprised, when they should fucking blink, you know? Yeah. And it, it's it's very I don't know, it's it's pretty rough. Now Oshino Ko is a very humble manga made by the mangaka Akasaka Aka, who did a very humble, humble manga or show called Kaguya Summer Love is War. <clears throat> and uh oh my gosh. Yone uh Mango Yoko 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 Yai, who is a mangaka <clears throat> Ooh, that was try a little bit. Mangaka for Scum's Wish, which is quite an interesting anime. I haven't watched it personally. The plot is a little too spicy for me. <laughs> but the artwork the artwork is great. They two those two collaborated, made Oshinoko, and it's a and they're basically just just ripping on th- their own industry. Yeah, it's not. It's about idols technically, but it's not. There, that's the that's the that's the you know the the forefront. But in a way, it's kind of poetic how the forefront is about idols, but it's actually about about what's going on behind the scenes. Dude, that's that shit's terrifying. It's very terrifying. It, it is so scary to think what we don't know about a lot of these different industries that make themselves out to be like. Oh, everything is fantastic. And like, oh. And, you know, I, I went down this rabbit hole. This is a little bit of a sidestep um, from the Japanese entertainment industry sure, or sure. just the industry um, in the East mm-hmm. here in the Merka. West. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's there been this whole thing that's come out about um about like child actors and like mm. all of that kind of stuff 
Um, and it's kind of funny because we were talking about like Camp Rock and like classic Disney original movies and all of that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And oh like, yeah, you mentioned that you mentioned the thing of Demi Lovato, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know there there's been so much scary shit that's happened at Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. Yeah. Like I hate to name drop all of these multi billion dollar companies, but you know it is what it is. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it, it's just really scary when later on down the road once you know the spotlight is off of them and that project that they're working on they're like hey so i've seen some shit and this is really bad right it it's like we we never are going to be able to know what's going on on those movie sets on those tv oh, shows no, those sets are or anything. behind closed doors shut ears top level type shit you got to be in to know yeah, right. Got to have like a security clearance or some shit. Literally, and I think now, I, well, at least I want to say right nowadays is probably better, because man, I hope so. I I, I do hope so because even in the two thousand when we're growing up, we're kind of, I don't want to say it's new still, but you know, I mean, we're still watching four eighty p sitcoms on on our on our plasma TVs or box TVs or VCR TVs or I'm sorry RCA TVs, you know. Yeah. So I want to say that we're still kind of getting into this whole idea of television mm-hmm. still, even in the early 2000s, late 90s, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so this whole industry has kind of been created and created around adults, essentially, mm-hmm. since the whole black and white <laughs> cranking films. Yeah. And it's the only way that an in, like these industries turn out the way they are is over time. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to just reverse that. Even if it's for the greater good, right. because let's say, hey, we're treating these people wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, we should fix that. But if we f- if we change this and that, what's going to ha- or if we change this and this, what's going to happen to that and that? Right. And if we change that and that, what's going to happen to those and those, and them and them? It's a structure that's built to. It's it's why we can't just say, okay, let's just you know, stop. Uh. Let's just stop stocks. Yeah, I. I, I let's just yeah. let's just stop major major investment gouging. We can't do that because yeah. our 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 entire our entire country runs on investment and debt <laughs> and student loans and student loans and a lot of moving parts. You can't just you can't just change the gear of a moving part and expect to just or or remove it and even replace it with a different one. You can't. You have to replace it with the same one unless you change the entire mechanism. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's hard to do on an industry that's been built for a, got a, a century or so. Yeah. You think about the the idea of kids being used as actors it's not a new idea no but the whole kid centric idea of like oh yeah you know like barney and and all of that kind of stuff where it was mostly kids Mm -hmm. who were who were in these shows who were acting all of that kind of stuff that was a new idea Mm -hmm. in i want to say like the late 80s early 90s right and then it just progressively became more popular as time went on Mm -hmm. and then it got to a point where it was like disney channel was making a whole bunch of stuff you had just all of these different companies that were trying to catch up because it was it was the hot and new thing it was Mm -hmm. the kid shows kids shows yeah television i can actually let my kid watch right instead of like okay kids we're gonna watch the news or we're gonna watch Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune or 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 Back to the Future for the 50th time. No. They want to watch PBS. Yeah. You know? They want to watch Uncle Roger and Sesame Street. Yeah. And that worked really well. But here's the problem. That's, you know, using kids in television is fine and all, but when you use kids in television, all of a sudden they're the idea of using children in I guess any media, let's just say television, turns into a chess piece. And now this is a chess piece that can move and yeah. can advance. So now you're not looking at the sanctity of these children and how they're going to grow up or how they're going to be raised behind, uh, behind. well, I guess not by parents, but in front of a camera. Yeah. 
and being raised by inanim by puppets and shit, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that they that they have learned that these puppets are not real <laughs> because they see the old ass dude <laughs> just w using using Elmo or whatever below the table, right? Yeah. What is that going to do to their to their to their growth? Right. And that doesn't matter because right now all that matters is that they're a pawn in this massive chess game and it's going to advance forward until all of a sudden, oh, this pawn just got taken. That's not good. We need to think about that. That's where we're at right now. Yeah. And or I guess right now the pawn's about to be taken or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think when when you talk about um, young actors and actresses, the idea that it's not just the studios or like the directors and stuff who are putting a lot of pressure on these kids. A lot of times it's parents too. Oh uh, yeah. Because, expectations. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I want my kid to be the best better than that kid. Yeah. And I mean the, the fact that they go from just being a kid to now they're the financial stability in their family Mm -hmm. Like they're the one who the ones who are paying the bills. They're the ones who are making yeah. it so that they can live in the house that they live in. Mm -hmm. And basically, a lot of times, what ends up happening is the parents will just turn into like managerial roles for them. So mm -hmm. basically, they're this one kid. Their entire world, their entire family revolves around them doing their job mm -hmm. at. 12 13 if not younger than that mm -hmm. then what happens if there's some really weird horrible shit happening behind the scenes like they're not gonna tell anyone about it because right. like that's that's th bad yeah that's just bad that's there's not, no other way to put it it's just not great it's not just their livelihood that they're that they could potentially jeopardize it's also their families too mm -hmm. so it's, it's like them it's, their family their their the their colleagues yeah the co-stars the, the, co -stars, yeah. the staff which that that's a burden that should not be given to a 10 year old right but the 10 year old is 10 right they're 10 what if they go through puberty and develop whoop de doo mental disorders depression depression mental illnesses because they're you know they're no longer they're they're 10 and honestly, I mean, by the, if they're they're child actors, by the time they're eight, they've already understood the the the, the sadness of the world. <laughs> so it's like whatever. But yeah. you know, puberty is a bit really strong thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're if who knows, everybody goes through puberty differently. Mm -hmm. But at some point, someone's gonna be they're gonna be an angsty teen. So that's just a wild card. And all of a sudden, now. They have they're an angsty teen trying to become a pre adult, but they've already been given that adult role like five years ago. Horrifying, isn't it? Very horrifying, and that's not something that you can just really. I don't know. It's it's rough. That's why I would like to think it's better now because we see child actors all the time, and nowadays there's a lot of you know liabilities and a lot of. A lot of close hawks and a lot of potentials for lawsuits, and you know you can't get away with a lot of things in the uh, that you could in the past, right? So right. I would like to think because of that ideology, it's better. How much better? I don't know. Maybe I'll never know. Yeah. Um. But I would like to think because of you know we're we're really, uh, you know these days twenty twenty it's all about independence and everybody's rights and stuff, right? Yeah. So I would like to think that with the movement of generations. Things will get better. That's what I'm hoping too. Because those poor child actors are now adults. And if they're still in the industry, they know how it works. Yeah. They know how it feels like to be a child actor. So they can make that change. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of documentaries and stuff. There's been a lot of people who have been writing memoirs and books and all of that kind of stuff. Just putting all of that stuff out there mm -hmm. just so that we know about it mm -hmm. and there's way more transparency now than there basically has ever been in regards to what's going on behind closed doors especially in hollywood and all of that kind of stuff mm -hmm.
but that doesn't mean that that's everything right. that's going on, right? Um, it, yeah. It's just so crazy. And So if that fascinates you, watch Oshinoko. <laughs> I'm totally going to watch Oshinoko. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's, 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 it's something. And it's the same idea. Child actors as well, in yeah. a way. Because there's a character called Kana, and she is a child actor. There's an episode in the first episode. There's an episode in the first episode. Great. Um, where she's like two or something or three. I mean, or I guess maybe a little older than that. But she is she is effectively a child actor. And she is uh, known to be a really good child actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because of that, she's obtained this pompous attitude. And that's and that's a uh, that's a characteristic that she'll learn to to uh, develop, I guess, and evolve as mm-hmm. time goes on. So it's really it's really cool to see her development in the manga. So I hope that that should happen in the anime as well. You should be able to see that. It's very cool. Yeah, the idea of kind of peeling off the veil with a lot of those idols and. And all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I mean it's so fascinating. It's a lot of it is more like how do you game the system essentially. Yeah, and also just this this idea of superstars, mm-hmm. goddesses, right? Untouchable beings, but they're also humans. Yeah. But they're untouchable beings. They are expected to hit their hit their choreography perfectly, their nose perfectly, smile perfectly, look at the camera perfectly, handle their fans perfectly. Right. Nah. And then outside of camera, not have romantic relationships that aren't in the public eye. That aren't in the public. Nope. No public. No relationships. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, for no, idols. For, oh, yeah. No, yeah. no contact with dudes or a vice versa. No. Any, no, no freedom. Yeah. Walking around with wearing disguises and shit. Basically, just never go out in public. You know that the music industry is fucking terrifying. The music industry is fucked, and it's it's the the reason why this is so interesting is because uh, idols is kind of a new concept to us. Mm -hmm. We've had celebrities, right? So we kind of get it, but idols in the East are different. They are basically manufactured. Perfect beings. I mean, have you seen K-pop? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those lovely individuals, great people, and human beings are manufactured to be the perfect human beings on the planet, to be robots. Yeah. Right. To be this trip, double, triple standard, be- beautiful woman, handsome male. Right. Mm-hmm. It's it's so fucked. It's crazy. Now I'm never I'm I, I I like to keep an open mind in everything, and I enjoy K-pop too. You know I've recently yeah. gotten into it. The music is fun. I think the choreography is great because it's impressive. I come from a break dancing background. Not that I did it myself, but you know I grew up with America's best dance crew, Jabberwockies, best crew, Kinjas. You know. Oh man. Yeah, that's what I grew up with. So when I first got introduced to K-pop, and I saw that these these group of of beautiful women and handsome males were not only singing but also slamming like literally background dance choreography live that shit was bonkers i thought that was great okay i have to say and this is a very unique perspective that i have because i've done a lot of like choreography i've done a lot of like stage shows and that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. trying to do anything while you're singing at the same time is like trying to like pat your head and rub your stomach at the same time Mm -hmm. it's like you're you're trying to multitask and do both of them perfectly and then just trying not to lose your sanity lose where you're at all of that kind of stuff like it is hard it is so hard i'm surprised that dancing is already hard enough for a lot of people yeah memorizing choreography super difficult Mm -hmm. and then add in trying to sing 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 well, have like right. good breath support, not yes, run yes. out of breath, not tire yourself out mm-hmm. too quick. Like it gets really rough. I mean, if you're singing while you're da- so let's say you're dancing, it already takes a great, uh, like depending on what I mean. If you see what these K-pop people are doing, they have to be fit. Mm-hmm. It takes a great athletic ability to do what they're doing, and even if they're not doing anything crazy, they're doing it over extended period of time. Right. It's their you're imagine doing jumping jacks 
but like like 100%, not some half ass. <laughs> no, hot jumping jacks or let's say burpees. You're doing burpees for like an hour long show while you're singing. What do you do when you sing, Zach? You exhale. Yeah. You exhale for a very long time. That's not normal breathing patterns. That's yeah. not, you know, you have to exhale and then you say you're, you say you're singing lines. That's how you inhale. Yeah. That's fucked. <laughs> and that's fucked. It, it's funny that you think that it's only for an hour because a lot oh, of yeah. those no, shows it's, are no, like it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> three hours, four hours, yeah, all night, dude, all I, night I, venues, <sighs> baby. No, that's fucked. And then encore, encore, oh, encore, <laughs> fuck. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's so it's so crazy and. When I'm, I mean, you know, I'm looking at it from more of like a theatrical perspective right, right, where right. it's like, you know, I, I've done, I've done it before. It's really hard. I don't know how I managed to do it. And like, I'm not, I'm not trying to give off the vibe of like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> I can't. No, I cannot. No. <laughs> I can barely do like a single song where I'm like having to do all this choreography, mm -hmm. doing all this crazy shit while also trying to sing at the same time, while also trying to make sure that I have good breath support mm -hmm. so that I have like a good tonality in my voice. Mm -hmm. And so there there are all of these things that are going on like in my head and like in my voice basically. Right. That's completely isolated from what my body's doing cuz my body's flailing doing all this mm -hmm. crazy shit. You know, it's super, it's super wild. And yes. it takes a very specific type of person to do that and mm -hmm. do it well. Oh yeah. Any K pop any K pop girl can probably beat me up. They're probably way more athletic than me. Bro, they got the endurance of champions. Oh yeah. They could beat the shit out of me. Like no question. I mean, I could probably bench more than them, but they'll fucking destroy me. Cause I'll get tired too quick. Cause I'm a hundred meter runner and I get tired fast. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'll get tired. I'll get tired. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's incredible. But that's also very scary, because that's every single one of those K-pop stars you see. It's such an unrealistic expectation. Too. Absolutely unrealistic. And yeah. it's and it's not just hey, let's form a K-pop group, my fellow friends. Yeah, high five, high five. No, it's auditions mm -hmm. it's rehearsals it's it's back breaking work it's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of aspiring k-pop or just or just anyone aspiring idols and it's like it's a lot of no's a lot of no's a lot of no's a lot of no's it's like a, a, an audition of a thousand people one person makes it to that group and every single at that entire and that thousand are all like neck and neck. Oh, they're they all a hundred percent god tier. Yeah, one of them makes it. Which Imagine is that. crazy. Imagine that. We're here. It's like I'm gonna start a music career. All right, YouTube, bam, Spotify, bam. All right, let's do our best. Now, to be fair, does that guarantee success? No. That's why you know, no matter what, you know, get going to an agency and learning marketing skills and stuff like that is always going to be the best because that's just how it works. It's not mm -hmm. really a good or a bad thing. It's just kind of how it works. It's just a thing. It's just a thing, right? Um, but it's way easier to get into music and be popular here than it probably is to be an idol over there. That's such a scary thought. Very scary. Just... <sighs> not, not, not that you can't just start music over there, right? Like I, there's, right. there's yeah, tons. Yeah. Of, like I have, I've, Follow tons of uh, small, smaller, you know, J-pop, J, J rock artists, and they're awesome. They're fantastic. But to get to the status of like being an idol, that's mm -hmm. an entirely different. Oh yeah, like your Imers, your Lisa, your uh, Millets, your uh, uh, your Canna Booms, your you know, your your Asian Kung Fu Generations. You know, I realized Asian Kung Fu Generation. Like that group is considered like idols. I never really think about technically. It like that. To be fair, they're a they're a vet in the game, and they put a lot of work. Not that and not not that anybody else doesn't. I love Asian Kung Fu. Generation. Oh, they're great. You know, they're like you watch their older like songs, music videos, or anything, and it's this is literally just like two thousand five, two thousand three, like Lincoln Park music video type shit. It's like it's great. 
Um, and it's a really it's an embodiment of four guys that started a band and made music. Sounds familiar? I bet it does. <laughs> At every band. Ever. But Who is to say that there weren't 50 other bands like them at the time? And they were the ones that made it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the competition thing. Now, where is this conversation leading? I don't know. It's basically just watch out because, you know, you want to chase your dreams. Well, you're going to be chasing your dreams for a while. All right? Yeah. And the the idea of chasing that status of, like, being an idol, being a celebrity, all of that kind of stuff, like... To get there, it is a road riddled with failure, and oh, it yeah. is a road that thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have walked down, but only a very select few have actually been able to get to the end of the road and be like, okay, all of this hard work that I put into to trying to establish myself in this industry, it actually paid off. Mm -hmm. And like I, dude, it's so crazy because I don't remember if I had a chance to talk about this on the podcast, but... When I went and did that photo shoot last week, mm -hmm. um, when, you mentioned it briefly, I think. Yeah. So, I for those of you who don't know, I do photography. That's just kind of zachpphoto.com. Zachpphoto.com. That's dude, thank you for the plug. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was. It makes it a lot easier to link things in the description. So it's not just littered. Yeah. It's just Zach, your YouTube, and then Zach P Photo. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm trying to like re. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh. Uh, the photography, you, the music thing. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so um, my old high school band director, he and I are still pretty close, mm -hmm. and he started this little group of musicians that go and play at weddings and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, hey yo, if you need anything, let me know. And they were doing a promo video and and taking some photos and everything like that, and. Also, this is me speaking out loud to remind myself to go finish editing those photos because I need them done on Monday. Oh, but I ended sounds up about right. <laughs> Listen, I, that's an entire. It's me too. It's all good. <laughs> I took a half a year to edit a wedding video, so you know it's that was only five fine. minutes long. So you know, go on. <laughs> so I ended up. Uh, making some really cool connections with some of the musicians there. Also, mm -hmm. um, you remember Skylar, right? Yeah. Uh, Skylar was there. He was playing piano oh, and singing there. Very cool. Skylar was a cool dude. And uh, it's so cool because he and I were just kind of chumming it up. Anyways, mm -hmm. so I ended up connecting with this with this girl who is a phenomenal vocalist. Nice. And she apparently has a band. Mm. And they go and play shows in Portland. Oh. And she was like, "Hey, I would love to get you you get you in contact." with my band and like you know we could do stuff together I, like i would love to do some type of collaboration with you and i was like oh Ooh. fuck oh shit that's cool and so like secretly behind the scenes um i showed her a song that i really like to sing and it's really hard and she was like oh you know this is like <clears throat> an acoustic guitar led song mm -hmm you should learn the song on acoustic guitar so that we can do it. And I was like, oh, shit. So for the last, like, ever since I got home that night, I think it was, like, Saturday night, I've been, like, working my ass off trying to learn this song because it's nice. a bunch of, like, really weird jazz chords and stuff. Ooh, which is, like, I love jazz chords. I, I'm sure you know, not my cup of tea on guitar. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, like, I'm making all of these really cool connections that I didn't think I would ever be able to make. And, like... You know, Skylar makes music. He does all of that kind of stuff. Like, he, he's directed short films. He's done a whole bunch of crazy shit. And I'm nice. like, I know that guy. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it's really interesting what happens when you're just a good person and you just are in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And, like, if you have something to offer for them, then you could just hop on it and, mm -hmm. and like, it becomes a thing. And I think all of that kind of all of the rambling kind of goes back to an idea that I heard from someone I can't remember who and I really wish I did okay it's the idea that luck is just a combination of preparation and opportunity mm -hmm. 
So if you're prepared for every and any situation to present itself, whether you're an actor, musician, whatever, or even just wanting to work your way up in a specific field, Mm -hmm. once that opportunity presents itself, then you can actually just get in, go in, Mm -hmm. and you're already ready. You're the... You've spent so much time working on it to the point to where, like, oh, I'm on it. Like, yeah. boom, I'm there. Mm. Um, and I think, I think I've been doing that a lot with music, especially recently, because I mean, the opportunities I have right now are crazy. Mm. And like the fact that I have a consistent gig where I can go up on stage and play piano and sing, like that's so fucking cool. And, like, I wouldn't change it for the world. And now there are other opportunities that are coming out, like, that I'm presented with where it's like, oh, if I wanted to or, like, if if this pans out the way that I think it will or how I want it to, I know a band that is constantly gigging. Mm -hmm. I know that I have connections at a specific venue that they want to play at. Mm -hmm. And I know with a level of certainty that if if push comes to shove and they're like, hey, here's a set list of songs that we're going to be doing, you should learn them. I can do that. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, oh, yeah, I'll just I'll be there. That's great. That's a lot of fun. Well, hopefully you can uh, seize that opportunity. What song are you trying to learn? Um, so it if is, I would know it. It is called Lonely Town. Uh, by a band called Wolfpack, V U L F P E C K. Really good, really um, heavy jazz influence. It's really cool. I can show you after after Ooh. we're done filming, but yeah, it's really cool. Well, and I'm excited for you. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm I'm excited to see what kind of stuff I can I can kind of dabble in. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, okay. You say that these connection things are. How do I say it, it's, it is that opportun- opportunistic thing, but it's also just like, you know, you just got acquainted with the person and then it just kind of mm-hmm. naturally happened. It's not I, I mean, sure, I suppose if you are a, a very cynical person, you can really formulate that. But in general, as long as you're just a good person, oftentimes these people you idolize are also just people. Yeah. And, you know, they just also want to help other people. Yeah. But the problem is, let's say you're like a super, super, super celebrity. You're a super celebrity, right? Mm-hmm. And you have millions of fans. You can't help m- millions of people at the same time. Yeah. That's just not going to be how it's going to be. But if you're in the right place at the right time and you meet this person and you you aren't being overly, you know, overly gushy about it, fanboy, fangirly about it, but you just kind of treat them like a human being and you, they, they'll treat you like a human being back. You get to know them. They get to know you. Who knows? Something could happen. Something might not happen, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because at least, at the very least, you had a cool encounter with the person you idolize. Right. And if something were to happen, that's also pretty cool. Yeah. And you never know. So if you just did that with a lot of people, whether they be celebrities or fellow fellow people in your field, then who knows? Like, I just recently got in touch with um, uh, my my previous video producer video production professor i don't know jesus words uh i guess instructor if you will because he he's no longer in the university that i went to but in june i believe june or july he reached out to me and asked if i wanted to work on a project with him and i did that and it was a lot of fun i got to learn new things i got to work with a small team and it was a great a great great experience it was freelance work uh i got paid for it too and it was a lot of fun Right. Nice. Yes. Very backbreaking work. Uh, editing work is going to be how editing work, you know. But in yeah. a, but in a way, it was kind of fun because I've all I've known in eight years was or seven at the time was just cod editing. So doing something new. It was some promotional video for some uh, native uh, native encouragement. Uh, not okay. That sounds. It sounds kind of weird. It's not like a nit worship is not the right word, but it's a group of people who are really into a certain uh, native belief that I, I, I mean, I, I'm an editor, so I don't really know like their actual thing, you know? I'm mm-hmm. just a, I'm just a, a, 
uh, outsourced editor guy. <laughs> you know, I don't you're know. The, just, I don't know the whole keyframe, details. Man. I'm just keyframing. You know, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, that's all I was doing. Um, but it was very cool. Yeah. Um, and it was a great experience. Fast forward to about a couple weeks ago, uh, I got in touch with them again, mm-hmm. uh, just randomly. So this is this is at about maybe five or six or so months, and I I can't recall what it was. But I just I oh okay it was for taxes because I had to file that project for taxes mm. because you know that's a thing you do when you freelance you file certain work for taxes which right. is interesting that was the first time I ever had to do that it's pretty simple actually so it's not too bad however they maybe you know uh, when you do your tax do you do your taxes by yourself or I with a lot of help right right, right. I mean but you know you do like a Intuit or whatever TurboTax yeah. and then you just mm-hmm. go through the process and it's free. Turns out, if you have a W nine, which is for freelance work, you have to pay for one of their subscription thingies, or one of their services, because they won't let you do a W nine hmm. for uh, non uh, for for the free version, which is odd. But that's fine. Not a lot of people do that anyway. So if you're not yeah. in that camp, good for you. I mean, I was never in that camp until recently, um, but that was just something interesting I thought I'd bring up. If you're a freelance work, you may have to pay for that extra thing. So keep that in mind taxes it's not a lot you know yeah, yeah, yeah. in the grand scheme of things just, you you just deducted a, just a little bit more no okay nobody cares anyways that's besides the point because of that i got in touch with them again um and we got into a call a microsoft team or a slack call i've never done a slack call before it's kind of goofy but it's whatever it's better than zoom i guess um and we just kind of talked at uh not even about the taxes well just a little bit you know just like hey yeah. did it go yes okay cool high five <laughs> and then we just talked for like an hour. Dude, I love that so much. You know? And it's and it was a very, very respectable talk. He respected me not just as his, as his ex-student, but as an editor, as a human being. And we just talked about li- not even editing at that point, just life. That's all. We just caught up and then talked about, you know, the future and what we what we're doing, what we're planning on doing, what's stopping us, things like that. And just had yeah. a, just had a go for like an hour or so. I think, yeah, like an hour and a half or so, just a conversation. And he gave me a lot of advice because he's someone who's also, he has worked in the industry um, prior to um, working in working as a professor. And I'm someone who's aspiring to maybe not necessarily go for the industry specifically, but I want to get into this filmmaking thing. I want to get into working with camera and video and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, well, specifically, I want to edit, but that, you know, yeah, I, I can't edit without film. So yeah. I need to make films to give myself projects to edit. Because I'm working on rebuilding my portfolio, which is why, shameless plug, I'm moving all of my gaming things and all that type of stuff into my second channel, Anuki 2. You can search it up. Um, and that's where that's been going. I've been I was just about to bring something up about that because I I love seeing your the stuff that you make in my sub box. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. I've been uploading like almost every day. It's been a lot of fun. I know. I noticed that. I was like, oh, shit. Yes. You you uploaded another video? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I should have uploaded today as well. Uh, best of January. By the time you watch this, maybe best of February is out of 2022, which is really funny. Um, but that's besides the point. All that stuff is being moved there. So my main channel is going to be reworked to be more of like my, it's going to sound pretentious. Bear with me. My film channel. My projects, well, my projects channel, basically, yeah. which kind of it already was that because I didn't, I had a second channel, Anuki Games, which you can still find. Uh, please don't find it, um, but that's where I would put just like let's plays and edited mm-hmm. gameplay and stuff. When I would play like Kingdom Hearts and 2K and shit, I put that over there. Um, but then my main channel was always my COD edits, so technically it's always been my projects thing, yeah, my projects channel. So it's just going to really nail that down. And now when I start to work on things like actual video, um, editing things, uh, uh, portfolio work, basically. Imagine it being my official portfolio. I will have an actual Behance or whatever the fuck people use. But I that will be my main channel will be essentially my visual or, or more easily accessed portfolio, I guess, that everybody can see. Because who the fuck wants to open up a Behance or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's where that will be. And that's what I'm going to dedicate that to. So that's what that's been that's what's been going on. And I was talking to him about that. I was like, hey, honestly, listen, your class first of all, <clears throat> your class, I loved your class. It was a lot of fun. I loved working with my colleagues and everybody was having a lot of fun making projects, but you know, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna put any of those projects in my portfolio. <laughs> that's fair. I'm yeah. gonna be honest. <laughs> but it's not because they were bad. There were there were a lot of fun. I loved working with our small team of people that just wanted to make a fun video. 
and may, and learn about audio and editing and writing and Chef Boyar Yeet. Chef, no, not not even that. I've never <laughs> uploaded any of my college projects. I've uploaded one. It was called um, Why the Fuck? Hold on, what is it? <laughs> Why the things the way they be? Oh, or oh, some yeah. dumb shit like that. It was hilarious. We. It was about. It was a. It was a. What is it called? A mockumentary, like a mock documentary. Yeah. Where you just there's this, there's this famous mockumentary by I can't remember who who she is. Um, it's kind of like this British woman, and she kind of does this documentary thing, but it's just absolute jokes the entire time, mm-hmm. and you just kind of are making fun of the topic at hand and making and just making the interview the interviewees uncomfortable with your stupid questions when they're trying to be serious it's yeah. hilarious i I, I love that shit i can't i think her name is sarah something i i that's i just pulled that name right out of my ass i don't know if that it's true um it might not be honestly but it's a hilarious if you can find it please do and it's it's a great binge watch series on youtube i'm sure you can find it um one of our writers jonathan he was he brought that idea up I think it was Jonathan. I hope so. Maybe I'm wrong. But he, someone brought it up. But he was one of the writers for the jokes as well as Ruby, and they, they just went, they just went for it. They just wrote down a bunch of jokes, scenarios, and it was a lot of fun. We had um, an actor, and we had uh, me and a, uh, another person for a camera person, and it was, and we shot it, and it was, it was a great time, and it was, it was a whole process. Although it was really silly, the end product was really silly. The work we did was real. Writing, storyboarding, scripting, acting, um, editing, you know, mm-hmm. directing, managing, all sorts of things. We all played a part. Yeah. And it was it was it was a great experience, even if it was for just a silly college project that wasn't honestly not even not even, in my opinion, at least for me, um, portfolio worthy. But it was still yeah. a great experience. I've seen that video and it's hilarious. Thank and you. I love it. I appreciate that. Yeah, we we worked really hard on it and it was and it was great. And uh, we I really want to apologize to the poor um, archivist I believe it, uh, he was uh, that was very serious about his work and we asked to interview him and then we just completely shit on him. Well, we didn't shit on him, but we made him incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> and he was a really that was so was, fucking funny, I to, bro. I need to mention that was not scripted. We did tell him that it was a mockumentary, and we did tell him that the interview may not be that serious. But he was ready. He brought he he, uh, <laughs> he brought like examples. He had gloves on. He was just going and he was going on. And then we were just like just saying some random bullshit. It was hilarious. <laughs> but it was so good. But it worked great. And the it pro- was so good. Thank you. I appreciate that. The project was great. And it was a good experience. That experience was fantastic. But still not portfolio worthy. So I want to start doing things like that i want to work on projects i want to get actors i want to you know just our friends or something mm-hmm. um i want to just give her a go i uh, think i'm not really a a you know a filmmaker or anything i just want to i by heart i'm an editor oh yeah if i can I, i've said it before i would literally just work in an editing team as someone who's just trimming up video clips and singing them together it's like my shit i don't know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know putting a couple keyframes here and there you know i'm not really a i'm not a crazy vfx person i'm not a camera operator i'm just want to work in the editing department but right, there's no way i'm going to get that type of footage without making it so i got to go out and shoot some shit yeah i think you and i are going to end up doing some really cool stuff in the near future especially since the weather is getting better you know mm-hmm. we're getting close to summertime Um, you know, there's just going to be a ton of stuff for, for us to work on. And I feel like both of us would really benefit from trying to work on a little bit more serious projects together, Mm -hmm. just because, I mean, we, we've done like PC builds and like a lot of that kind of stuff where it's basically just you and I memeing around and Mm -hmm. like, you just have a lav mic and you're just like, do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is how you build a computer right, and then right. you're waving a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a motherboard around by mm-hmm. the cpu cooler which is completely safe by the way as long as you've mounted it correctly it's totally fine yeah it's fine everything's fine it's crazy to think that that was before we started the podcast i know that's wild anyways i i really do think that you and i would be able to come up with some really cool stuff to work on um and it would get both of us kind of working on different aspects of what we do. Mm-hmm. 
that would be really cool. I, I definitely will be coming up with ideas for that. And we do have a couple ideas that we've come up with already. Um, that sound like a lot of fun. We just need to go out and do it. Yeah, we just need to do it. But I mean, the weather's good now. And as soon as I get on a better schedule, uh, I, we should be able to. So yeah. I'm excited. As soon as I get on a better schedule. As soon schedule as you get too. on a better schedule. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm looking for work again. So when I yeah. get work, I'll have to figure that out. Right. Um, and then I'm also doing this little second channel thing, which I got to figure that out. Um, you know, I, I'm putting a lot more on my plate, but I mean, it's not that bad, honestly. For sure, yeah. So we'll figure it out. Yeah. I don't know if I'll yeah, keep dude. uploading daily. That's that's just more of just a spur of the moment thing because I have a lot of things to edit. But you know, <laughs> we'll I mean, see. we'll see. I honestly, while you still have the the free time and while you still kind of have that fire under your ass that you just are like, okay, cool, so I can upload whatever I want. Fuck it. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> I mean, I. I'm working on the NAS video because I, I built, I mentioned I built a, a NAS and network attached store, network attached storage, and I filmed the whole process right. um, in in complete filmmaker glory. Like I, I didn't just took out my 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 tripod and, and or my vlog stick and like, all right, guys, we're going to we're going to build a NAS. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and like. There's gonna be a giveaway. Be sure to use my Fortnite supporter creator code. Um Sponsored by G Fuel. Sponsored by, okay, uh, some sort of company, you know, and then it's whatever. No, it's a, it, it's every, I, it, it's not planned necessarily, but it was shot in a way that was going to make my editing a lot easier. So I shot in a way, or I, I shot everything with editing in mind, with filmmaking in mind. For sure. Rather than just, no, I'll just, you know. Put a tripod here and give her a goal, you know. I, I, I really planned my shots um, whenever I worked on it, which made building the NAS take a long fucking time. <laughs> but it's all good. It's whatever, you know. But for the content. But for the content. So I'm working on that right now. Um, Minecraft video, that was a lot of fun. I uploaded that. Star Rail. So I'm playing this new game, Zach. I saw that. I'm playing video games again, Zach, and I'm having a lot of fun. It's been a long time. And you're recording it, <laughs> and which I'm is recording crazy. It. It's from streams, right? But I'm recording my streams. This is what I do, right? Um, although some of them I might just record off camera because uh, some of them are just side. Anyways, that's besides the point. Honkai Star Rail. This is not an ad. Um, so they're made by the same peeps who made Genshin Impact. I've seen ads of this game. You Yeah, okay. You may have. It's fascinating. It is basically what Genshin wishes it could be. It's almost... I don't want to say that because I, I don't like... You know, I, I'm, I'm not like a, like a super, super pretentious about this but i also don't like to just throw names out it's mm -hmm. not my jam um but i am i can say this as a long day one genshin player i love genshin to death i love it you know for all of its glory and all of its flaws but they basically just made a new genshin combined with their um previous game called honkai impact thir the third which is a great game but it's there's a lot of flaws in that as well. They took those two games, merged them, merged all the good stuff together, and they made Honkai Star Rail. And it's about space adventures. It's turn based, which is a lot of fun. That's um, cool. And it's it's a great story, and it's hilarious. It's it's actually like genuinely pretty fun. There's like funny moments, and you get to really um, get to know the, this band of characters, you and uh, Mitsuki and uh, and Tanko. And it's it's hilarious. It's a great time. Uh, it it it, is, it has a lot of love to it. You can tell everybody's having fun making this for sure, and you and you have a lot of fun playing it because of that. Mm -hmm. It's not just like I love Genshin to death. I will still I still love Genshin, but the more I play Honkai Star World, the more I just want to keep playing. The more I want to keep going on. Um, it's a free game. This is not an ad, but you know you can spend money if you want. I'm gonna see how far I can get just playing for free because I usually opt to just spend a little bit of money because a hey, you know. You know, hey, when in Rome, when in Rome, you know, but we'll, we'll see how far we go is the gotcha. So keep that in mind. But, you know, for people that had a hard time getting into Genshin because, you know, the open world was a little bit too much. You didn't really know what you were doing. Storyline was kind of all over the place um, and it was hard. It, there's too much talking and too much dialogue to really get into it. Star Rail was kind of it was is kind of the way to go because it's turn based. It's uh, and it's it's very Everybody's played Pokemon. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we know what that is. It's fine. Um, or like uh, old school Legend of Zelda bullshit. It's basically just that. So the gameplay is simple enough. And you, it, there's a learning curve, sure. But, you know, because the gameplay itself is simple, you can figure it out. 
um, all the characters are lovable and 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 enjoyable whether they're cute acute small characters or hot women handsome males you know it's it, there's a little bit of a little bit of everything for everyone you know and it's yeah. uh uh, <laughs> and there's this just this little this little I don't know where they got it from I I don't know who who is writing these damn scripts or who in the boardroom actually had a funny bone, but the co- the comedy is hilarious. <laughs> don't you there's, love when it's actually funny? It's so funny. <laughs> the main character. I, I, okay, I'm not gonna say too much because you know when you talk about and explain jokes, they're not funny. Right. Yeah. That's how it works. But I, when I tell you, I was having so much fun just cracking up on stream or even by myself, just playing the game. There's silly dialogues like um, the main character. You basically get three options uh, depending on the dialogue. Um, essentially, you'll get three, two to three options. One's like an optimistic, like, yeah, let's do it. One's like a pessimistic, oh, this is going to suck. And then the third is like a joke one. And it's hilarious. And, and whenever you pick the joke one, everyone's like, okay. And it's hilarious. The main character is super lovable. There is a section in the first, first or the second planet you go to, Jirio, uh, and th- like you, that's so bonkers. There, there's a, <laughs> you can like dig through trash cans, and each trash can has a special dialogue. It's like what the fuck? Have, you do, do you know um um, West Loathing that game, the stick figure game that Markiplier played? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Did you ever watch it? I didn't watch a ton of it, but okay. I know about it. Do you it. know about the Spittoons? No. Darn. Okay, so that's basically what it reminded me of, because in the game, West Loathing, which is a hilarious game, by the way, um, there are Spittoons, which are like, you know, old spit jars that people would spit back in the old days. Back spit in that wacky days, tobacco. Spit that wacky tobacco inside the Spittoon. And there's an ongoing joke where every time you go into a bar, there's a Spittoon, and you can just investigate this platoon and dig through it and it's nasty and it's full of dialogue and it's hilarious same thing you dig through trash cans they all have different dialogues and it's hilarious like you dig through one and then your 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 colleagues uh, tanko and mitsuki are like what the fuck is wrong with you there's one and you get a there's one where you get a special icon with the trash can there's one where it's like there's one toppled over and then you find out that the top the 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 top the the one standing up uh, or the one that was toppled over was the one that's standing up's father, and then the one that's the standing up is like, "You raised me," and then this whole thing, and then he dies. It's it's fucking incredible. It's so <laughs> wacky. It's so wacky, but it's hilarious. <laughs> it, I, and and oh my gosh, it, someone whoever is writing it was just having fun, and I love that, bro. I, I need love, to watch the footage. Oh, it's it's like super meta breaking, and it's hilarious. And is there, it is it up on your channel? Like, up, is, there's three. Four ep- by the time this ep- this uned episode goes up, I think about five episodes will be up, and it's a more chill. It's a more sorry. I'm just shameless plugging myself, but it's a more relaxed type of episode thing where like they're hour long. Mm-hmm. But one I mentioned one of my favorite streamers, KYR Speedy. I watch him all the time still. Um, he also just does this long format, like 30, 40 minutes to hour plus two hour long just videos, and he uploads like one two to t- two uh, one to two times a day. And whenever I'm just doing shit, I just have him up. I, and I just have it run in the background while I'm doing shit, editing, brushing my teeth or whatever. Because they're funny. They're relaxing. And it's just kind of white noise that's that'll give you a laugh every now and then. It's kind of like just listening to a podcast or music. But after you listen to your playlist 50,000 times and after you're caught up with your podcasts, you're like, okay, well, I want to watch videos. But sometimes, you know, the video, I, I got to put my full attention to the video, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to do that every time while I'm vacuuming i don't know cooking the uh, jack not i don't know you know so you just have a video on let it go so yeah. that's kind of that idea that's the idea of this whole channel this whole channel is going to be just just minutely cut videos i mean the minecraft video was actually edited but mm-hmm. just videos that are cut strategically so that there's just constant content there's no break and it just it just keeps going so it's not necessarily an easy editing job because i still have to go through the footage and cut things that are not important and make, you know, five hour long streams, condense them down as much as possible. Um, but yeah, so it's not just easy work. I'm so I actually have to watch the five hour stream again, but <laughs> but shit. shit. But it's it's basic it's just basic cuts, you know, and just mm-hmm. funny moments and it, it's a lot of fun. So if that's your jam, hey, I appreciate if you check us check me out. Uh, Anuki too. Anyways, sorry. Shameless plug over. By the time this episode goes up, about five or so episodes will go. 
Um, specifically the trash can one. That one is bonkers. That one will be up by the start of this episode. And the next episode is also one where there's a hotel and you review you review this poor lady's hotel. It's hilarious. <laughs> you can call her tea garbage and her bed shit and everything, and then you could sign it as Heisenberg. It's hilarious. Like why why would you do what the fuck? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's one where you <laughs> there, there's 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 one this this is one's my favorite. You go into a hotel room and there's a closet and you get special dialogue. Oh, this without a doubt this is a closet. Um, and then there's this whole sh- thing. No, Zach, it goes bonkers. You go, there's this whole thing where you go inside the closet and you sit in the darkness. And you're like, this is kind of weird. Should you get out? No, the darkness is my friend. That's the spirit. And then you go through this whole Narnia trip. And then, that, and then this whole voice in your head describes that there's demons in the hotel. And you have to suppress the demons. And then you suppress the de- It's so bonkers. I love it. Someone is having so much fun in the writing room. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm just I'm so excited to see um the video that you put out that has the trash can bit. Oh, yeah. Like you need to tell me. Like oh, yeah. give me time it'll stamps. Be, and- it'll be called it's at the end of the episode, but it's it's just it's just called trash cans or something. Like trash cans and committing crimes or something like that. <laughs> trash cans and committing crimes. That's what I'm saying. This game is bonkers. <laughs> I can't I'm try and then I forget that wait, there's a serious plot line about the end of the world and saving worlds, but I can't I don't know because I'm too busy spending five hour streams looking for trash cans across the world. On the search for trash cans. On the search for trash cans. That's all I did. As soon as I figured this out in my stream, I'm like, okay, this is all we're doing. I'm going to, I'm, look, listen, we're fugitives. We're looking for, we're trying to save the, we're trying to save the world. I don't care. I'm digging through trash cans. So I just sat there and dug through trash cans. But no, it's full of references. It's hilarious. Uh, I found a Muhammad Ali poster. I, there's a Fight Club reference. I, I said Heisenberg. Uh, it it's literally it it literally is Heisenberg. No 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 stops. Nothing. You just click you click it and it doesn't mention it. It just says Heisenberg. You click it, it proceeds. You're like, what the fuck? Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. That's so good. It's so bonkers. And if you want to play it, definitely do so. Um, if you click the link in the below, it's actually an ad. Li- no, I'm just kidding. It's not an ad, but um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Anyways, that's been the adventures of Nuki and Zach. After a while, um, hopefully, uh. It was enjoyable, I suppose. I don't know. We've been talking about anime a lot, so it's good to... You know, we don't talk about anime a lot, so it's good to bounce back every now and then. Yeah. You know? Take a break from talking about life to talk about anime. Take a break from talking about anime to talk about life. It's a good balance in this in this podcast, I would say. I love the little spurts where we'll have a couple episodes that are just like 100% anime, and then it'll go back to like weird random shit, and then oh, it'll yeah. be like, oh, we watched this show, or we watched this movie, mm-hmm. and then it's just like, <gasps> it's Christmas. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But yes, check us out in the description. You guys know the deal. Like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. Watch the last or watch the, the recent episodes. Go and watch the Suzume episode. I had a lot of fun talking about that. Oh no! And also watch the Bochi the Rock episode. Yeah, that one's been that one was a lot of fun. I played the guitar here, so if you want to watch Nuki play the guitar a little bit, guitar Nuki, the guitar Nuki, Kita Nuki, then you know, go ahead and check that out. But thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. So long. Farewell. <laughs> <laughs>